Hey everyone, welcome back for another shoutcast, and today it is a 1 vs 1 matchup between myself and Bloodmaster, or Chuck Noob as he is going by in this game. This game was played on Eruption uh, recently, and I hope it's an interesting game. One on one is usually somewhat disinteresting, but uh, we'll see uh, how this one goes this time. Anyway, this is myself. I'm playing on location 5, I think. I'm not sure. It's the top right, of course, anyway, as you can tell on the minimap. And Bloodmaster's playing on the bottom left, and I'm gonna say location 2, but I really don't know. Anyway, both of our locations have an absurd number of fish on one-on-one, -on -one, since this fish is supposed to be shared. There's 120 here, and then there's 80 here, and 40 in this lake, so we both have 100 and fish. And Bloodmaster is doing something quite unusual. He's going, uh, you'll see it, he goes for two stone masons and then just doesn't build a third one. Uh, he quickly cut a tree with a vineyard too, which is interesting. And you can see, eight minutes in, he still only has two stone masons. Which is strange. And here he goes for two more. Whereas I've had four all along. He does have his farm up well, later than mine, but he's got his road to his gold down already. And so do I again, but his gold is quite a bit further. Uh, he does have two farms up, whereas I only have my first one coming up. Uh, and I say these uh, you you might think his stone masons are a tad late, but actually they might be just in time, considering he's had to plow his fields right when his stone masons went up. One thing to consider is if you're out of stone early in the game, uh, start digging fields. Even if you don't have your farms done, uh, if you dig fields where you think your farms are going to be, you won't have to dedicate that time later on with your laborers. And that can save you a minute or two. Uh, if you're waiting for stones, it's better to have your laborers doing something as opposed to uh, sta standing around or sitting around waiting for a stone. Alright. You can see we're pretty neck and neck. I do have my third farm coming up a bit before him. His end is done. His third woodcutter is up. Well, mine, I have four done already. So I'm a little faster than him. He's working on his fifth woodcutter already. Dedicating the space early on for uh, buildings, uh, not planting at all. It might have been a nice idea to plant just a little bit with this guy, but uh, he figures he doesn't need that extra wood. If he would have planted early on, it's nice if you can get a woodcutter to plant before he cuts trees, because by the time he's done cutting everything, uh, the trees he planted will fully grown. He'll be able to cut them quickly, and you get a little bit of extra timber out of it early on. Okay, and our iron is coming up at pretty similar times. I uh, forget to put my iron smelter, I think this game is what happened. So it's uh, I plan to put it here, but you can see I'm waiting. I like to have the road done to it before I start. Uh, if I'm building roads around the plan, I like to put the roads down. Especially, all right, I'm going to slow it down so I can actually explain this. You see the stones are going to be coming roughly from above the iron smelter here. When I'm making the road below, uh, the search are going to have to walk around the building plan to give those laborers uh, the stones, and that can cause a little bit of traffic. So I like to have the uh, the building, uh, the road done if it's beneath the building, if that makes any sense. If my stonemasons were working down here, it wouldn't matter, since they wouldn't have to go around the building and deliver the stones. And I don't really know if it really helps too much, but... Uh, it's just an additional little thing that I like to do uh, to maximize efficiency, I guess. And this is something I always try to do these days. I have six farms before 30 minutes, and I think it's uh, really nice. And if you look, uh, he does have his iron a bit faster, but he has only three farms. So he has half as many farms as I do, and his iron is only slightly ahead of mine. So in this case, I would consider myself uh, far ahead of him. 
I also already have a fisher, so I will be gathering extra food early on. This population is... Actually, ours are about equal. I have an extra five builders. And he has a few extra serves. As soon as your iron smelter goes up, build a second iron mine. Since iron smelters work so much faster than iron mines, uh, one iron mine can't keep up. Uh, it's especially important on maps with you when you only have three iron mines. You build uh, your iron mines as early as possible because you won't be able to build your fourth iron mine, of course. And without four iron, uh, iron mines, you're not going to be able to keep your iron production steady unless you make a really early iron mines, which is exactly what I'm doing here. Now if you make your second iron smelter early enough and your third iron mine early enough, you can actually get away with only making two iron smelters the entire game. I recently played a game an hour and 30 minutes long and I was able to play it without really any trouble on iron at all because uh, I made two iron smelters so early. Now one problem with, or one thing that kind of led to that is uh, my blacksmith guys did get hungry so I wasn't consuming or my blacksmiths were starving for a little while, so I wasn't consuming iron bars very much, but... Also consider, uh, storing iron bars if, uh, you're having difficulty getting your iron smelt. Iron smith is up there quick enough. Excuse me, I keep stuttering. It's important to get your tannery up before 20 minutes. If you don't, you're gonna have a hard time getting enough leather. Unless you're going maybe double stable, stable gaming, but either way, you should have your tannery up before 40 minutes game time. If you can have it up by 35 minutes, then that's that's really good. That's nice and fast. Well, you can see here I'm producing a little extra corn. It's not a huge problem. I believe I'm, no, I'm not storing it. Not this game. It's not a big problem. As a the swine farm's only a little late. In a minute here, it won't even look like I'm producing excessive corn. I'll quickly go over to Bloodmaster. This is the correct tactic to go by in 1 vs 1, I believe, is swords and pikes. A little bit of swords and lots of pikes. Uh, you'll, for certain, if you're in a team game, 4 vs 4, if you make knights, you can always position your knights over an enemy that didn't make many pike. But in one-on-one, -on -one, if you have knights, there's only one thing, only one enemy you can target. And if that enemy made pikes, uh, your knights are heavily nullified. Or heavily nerfed, I should say. They're not null, but they are nerfed for sure. And in addition, uh, if you're making pikes and your enemy is only making swords, you're going to outnumber them for sure. And you're going to see a maximum of 50 bows on the field. You're not going to see any more than 50, very likely, in a game. So therefore, uh, pikes don't have to fear uh, masked bows like they do in the team game. So, in combination with a very good advantage over horses, a very good advantage in numbers, and an advantage over the lack of bows in the battlefield, pikes shine much brighter in one-on-one. -on -one. And I kept that strategy for a while when I was playing one-on-one. -on -one. I think I did a shoutcast against Killer when I played against Killer, and I went with pikes, and it worked rather well, I think. So Bloodmaster uh, is really clever in doing that. You see his uh, arm two armory workshops up in 45 minutes, it's nice and early. It looks like he's lacking a few coal mines. Uh, maybe not, he doesn't even have his third iron smelter up yet, so he'll be okay. He is lacking iron, but can see uh, these buildings are having a hard time running efficiently and with uh, this additional blacksmith going up or weaponsmith going up it's going to be uh, even trickier. Excess piled up timber. If your sawmills stop working that's that's bad because uh, you're going to have uh, the more they get blocked or uh, backed up the uh, more likely you are to have a uh, Oh my goodness, and all this traffic. The long, if your sawmills stop working, then that's a penalty because you're not having as much wood for later on. It's you're kind of penalizing yourself. And uh, this is quite some traffic that Bloodmaster has here. 
That's why you want to get the blacksmith out of your barracks up nice and early. And uh, we're not going to watch that brutal traffic jam because it's uh, just too, too scary to watch. Towers up nice and early. Towers are very important in one on one. You see these towers, uh, how I've been making my towers lately, when they're diagonal from each other like this, I'm making them separated by each other from a slope of one, if you're familiar with graphing. And by that I mean, for every tile I go over to the right, I go one tile down to the right, down. And vice versa. To the left, I go one tile up one tile. And that way they're at a nice and even diagonal, which will make it slightly easier to uh, maneuver my bows back and forth between these towers for when I'm pushing. Now I should have made these towers up here, looking at it now, because these rocks here will make it awkward to uh, awkward to push on these towers. So he'll have to attack from here or maybe down here even, which is not possible. But anytime you have rocks like this, try to position your tower so that he'll have to keep his bows over these rocks. <laughs> It'll be really annoying. This is actually a bad design in the map. Uh, maybe he figured the towers would go here and here. But that's way too far. So I, I wish I caught that. It would have been handy, probably. Just like this rock here is actually very nice for defending. Because if your towers are here and here, there's, they really can't push from here. They'll have to push from here. And Bloodmaster, as usual, not having his towers up. And since it's one-on-one, -on -one, we're not going to be looking at too many players' bases. We'll look at the peacetime armies. Uh, pretty good from Bloodmaster. Nothing super special, but he's got plenty of pike and lance and some sword to, to go with it. I'm not going to spend my time uh, adding him up to see if he has balanced weapons and armor. You can do that. Pause the video and do that if you want. Uh, lacking wooden weapons for sure, but a nice amount of leather and horse for myself. And we'll get this underway. You can look at the final cities too. Pause it if you're really interested in looking at the numbers of each kind of building. And scouting is extremely important in 1 vs 1. As a, especially on a big map like this, it's difficult to uh, scout the whole map by yourself. But And you should scout to the edges. Because if you scout to the edges, you can always glance at the mini-map to catch uh, enemy maneuvers. And here, critical mistake by Bloodmaster uh, letting me slip in through here. Because now I'm exploring his defense, and uh, this will be very useful later on when I uh, attack to uh, see what he has. Now if I can explore this too, it would be handy, but I do see his barracks, and that's very useful. Now looking at Bloodmaster scouting, you can see he didn't even attempt, and for that matter, it's really nice to have a few knights to get some exploring done. Every kill you get is really nice. You just gotta be careful not to lose knights. Losing a knight over a few bows is not worth it. I feel pretty confident, so I move out right away. And uh, I don't feel like camping. I want to be aggressive. You can see more uh, kills from me, but that knight got killed very fast. It's 
kind of unfortunate. I should have done some diagonal maneuvers to dodge some arrows, but every once in a while the bows will get good shots and the knight will die faster. If you're not familiar with the way fighting in Knights and Merchants works, it's a random chance that a unit will lose a health point. So you don't know for sure when your soldier's going to die since you can't tell when they're losing, hit, uh, losing health. It's a very nice dynamic as it makes you have to have a stronger feel for the game and uh, makes the combat a little less, a uh, little less obvious the way it's going to turn out, and it's interesting. Now you can see I have very few bows here. I have like maybe 30 only. And that mess has quite a bit more. In addition, he's right next to his barracks, so you know he can pump out additional soldiers easily. Uh, I have 28 jackets, and, and it's really not a good idea to push really heavily when you have that much armor in your barracks, because it's kind of a waste. So Bloodmaster feels, uh, my army is split, and it's never good to split my army like this. But feeling like I can take on the pikes, I uh, go ahead and let him engage. Now, keep in mind that Oh, I do see this. I don't remember seeing this in game, feeling like these pikes weren't here. So my decision to fight was based on that. The reason I storm here is because I want to kill a few bows. And storming units won't stop storming to turn around and fight if they get caught. But here you can see these knights are going to die really fast with swords, pikes, and bows all targeting them. Now here I intend to flee, but unfortunately my soldiers march down a little bit first and this guy taking too long to respond, I get caught. And uh, I lose all this melee for nothing. Losing bows. So the fight I definitely lost. I'm not coming on top of that one. And partly because, you know, he had his barracks nearby so he was able to bring in reinforcements really fast. He's too busy focusing on killing my archers here, so I turn around and get some nice kills. Unfortunately, my knight gets caught here. But, uh, <laughs> Knights and Merchants miracle, really. <laughs> Both knights get out alive after getting many kills right in the nick of time. That's not often that happens. But as you can see here... And these bows do get away. I have plenty of jackets to rebuild my army, so I'm not too worried. But here I stop paying attention with my knight, and uh, he catches it. So that knight ended up dying anyway, but it was still a, still a really funny moment. Now, I was curious if Bloodmaster saw my bows here. No, he didn't. He didn't know where they were. So I was able to get out of there alive. I continue to feel really confident, and uh, the biggest reason I pushed right here, in fact the only real reason, is I wanted to, sh to distract him while I sent my bows over here to kill these oncoming bow, uh, or my knights over here to kill these bows. But here, now I have the same thing happened to me, I was too distracted with killing these guys and then he snuck up on me here. Which is bad, because I didn't want to get engaged, I only wanted to uh, distract him. And I do get lots of kills here. My knights there died really fast and his swords unfortunately held up really well so wasted uh, my knights there trying to kill those sword fighters. And again, you know, I get caught here on accident. Just a waste of knights. 
for every step forward I take, I take a step back. And perhaps two steps back. At this point, it's pretty even. But uh, as you can see, Bloodmaster is actually not doing as well a job as I thought of producing his soldiers and keeping his economy balanced. You can see, I have way too many, uh, too much armor. And uh, this is one problem. I never had a this weapons workshop doesn't work the entire game. And here, uh, three towers get hungry, so Bloodmaster takes this as an opportunity to march in. Really unfortunate timing for me. He does step back. I'm not sure why. I guess he's not too confident. Yeah, he doesn't know how many soldiers I have. I lose one knight to uh, bows. It's really bad at this point in the game because I can't lose any afford to lose any soldiers. And here because of starvation, you know, I got a little unlucky, but then it, it's my fault after I can't fix the starvation. And here I'm being just a little too aggressive and can't get back in time just has so many soldiers because these pikes are just so easy to cruise. Uh, and the battle commences. I have so many towers though. How many of you I'm losing surfs like that again. So at this point, the game is, uh, <laughs> it's really over, unless Bloodmaster's having crazy problems with salvation, which is not. It's probably not really. Oh, I just just one. Even though I am to keep him out of my base for now. Able, I am able to keep him out of my base for now. But he does the right thing, just continues to go to my base and killing serfs. But you see, he's just able to produce way too many soldiers for me to repel this army. Only my weapons workshop had been working. Those extra soldiers might have made a difference. And here is the game. Ah. You can see I'll spam me having more soldiers for nearly the entire game.
but it was a lot of fun. One of the most fun games I've played in a long time. And uh, I hope that this is a ser beginning of a series where we can uh, continue to have rematches until I'm finally able to beat this guy. Uh, as you can see at one point, he starts making additional farms, which is really clever. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good night.